Have you ever wondered where your drinking water comes from? A third of us get our drinking water from underground. It comes from a special rock called an aquifer. Now these rocks hold water very much like a sponge, but not all rocks can do this. There are two important things that a rock needs to be an aquifer. It needs to have spaces in that rock to store water and it needs to be able to let water flow through it. These two things are called porosity, which means that it's got space to hold the water, and permeability, which means that water can move through the rocks. And I've got three rocks here that have different properties and we'll test out whether or not they can hold the water and let that water pass through. First of all, I've got a sandstone and I'm going to tip some water onto the sandstone and see what happens. Now, it's sitting on the surface to begin with, but as we're waiting here, it's starting to slowly sink in. And I know this because it's not on the surface like a bubble. It's starting to just look a little bit wet and the bubble is, is sinking and lowering. The second rock is a basalt with lots of holes in it, lots of bubbles in it. And this is a volcanic rock. And I think you can guess what's going to happen here. I'm going to pour some water. It's sinking into those holes. The third rock is a mudstone and if I pour some water on this that just sits there so that's not getting absorbed that's sitting on the top of the rock it's not sinking in so it's not permeable and it's not got the porosity to hold water so we know that this first one is both porous and permeable and it looks like the second one is as well but we don't know if it'll pass all the way through because we don't know if all of those bubbles connect to one another and the third one the mudstone, it's just sat on top, so I can just brush it off the surface because it isn't sinking into the rock. So that's not porous and that's not permeable. You can experiment with this yourself, even if you don't have these rocks, because there are some different things that have these properties that you might find in your kitchen. So this sandstone here is made up of lots of individual grains of rock that are stuck together and have gaps in between. And this can be very closely represented by a jar of chocolate balls that have spaces in between them. So that's going to be our sandstone. Now we've got a rock with lots of holes in it, but we're not sure if all of those holes connect to one another to make it um, permeable. And that can be represented by a bubbly chocolate bar. And lastly, we've got our mudstone where the water just sat on the top and we can represent that by something like just a solid chocolate bar. So we want to know if we can use our sandstone as an aquifer. So I'm going to put some milk in between our grains and we can see quite easily that there is definitely porosity. There are spaces between these grains to hold the liquid and we'll see if it's permeable. Yes, that is permeable. We can get the liquid out of those rocks and it's flowing through them. The second one has holes in, so it may be able to hold the water. What about permeability? Can we get the liquid out of this aquifer? No. So we know that that might be porous because it's holding the water within the spaces, but it's not actually permeable. However, if there were lots of cracks in this rock type, it might be that the liquid and the water in an aquifer could still flow between them. Finally, is our last chocolate bar. Now, probably don't need to try to show you what would happen if you try and drink the milk through the chocolate there. It's not porous and it's not permeable. And that's very similar to our mudstone. So have a go yourself using our non-geological variations instead.